everybody welcome in welcome into the second day of the first weekend of the yes. season i am here with line her hello everyone. hi we are at his channel for now we'll yes. be on mine later on but that's for later yes the important thing is we're here mm -hmm. there has already been a series going on multiple all day. today Hope you all are having a lovely Sunday. Yes. Um, what are we doing today is that we're going to see the losers bracket mm -hmm. and then the tiebreakers. Is that That's correct? That's right. So we're going to be able to take you through all the series that have happened so far this weekend and give you mm -hmm. the scores as they stand, who's already qualified, who's already out, and what's coming for the remainder of it. As you just mentioned, we're going to do the first series here, which is a loser's bracket match, Liu M versus Magpie. Mm -hmm. The loser goes home. That is it. They are out of mid-season. They are not going through goodbye. to next weekend. Yeah, nah, goodbye, Naskladano. Um, you're gone. The winner of that series will go through to a tiebreaker match that will have a chance to get through. Um, mm -hmm. Both of the players in this lost their day one series mm -hmm. um, to a couple to uh, Kerpaten and Puzzle Express respectively. So we obviously will take you through their decks, we'll give you all the information as we get it. They're about to go live in real time. As always, with these official casts, they are on a 30 minute delay. So mm -hmm. we are live, the games happen with that slight delay to give us the uh, competitive integrity that you would yes. like to see, right? Yes. Amazing. A few of the important things, of mm -hmm. course, we're now going to go through <laughs> through <laughs> all the decks and yeah. all of the wins and losses of the weekend. Uh, we are keeping an eye on the chat, however, not really interacting with you guys. Yeah. But, you know, if, you, if we're having a technical issue, if we're, if something, the sound is really off, yes. let us know. We're keeping an eye on it, however, not really replying. Yeah. That's just how it is when we're focused on casting. We have had some amazing casts today. Yes. I need to give a shout out to Bomblin and Merson, who just finished a very, very tense. Yes. Um, Siri between Mayamon and Joe. Reverse sweep that in was, the end. Yeah, Mayamon finally won with that new card yeah. deck. But we're going to have a look into that. I'm just, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, I, was I, I was just watching it before yeah. we uh, went live. Yes. So I think it would be great to have a look. What is this uh, tournament even about? Yeah, so we're going to go in, we're going to give you some information now about the basics of the tournament, mm -hmm. how the format looks, and we're going to update you on exactly what that means. So, so we have four groups uh, that are competing for mm -hmm. in total eight places in the next weekend. Yes. Uh, those four groups were uh, divided by Borja and Vlad based on when they qualified and how they qualified. And how they qualified. So this is how it is. Uh, these groups happen kind of simultaneously all yeah, over the weekend. And some uh, some groups are more ahead than others because it's three cast but four groups. That's right. So when you see the results now, don't be alarmed that maybe some have progressed more than the others. Yes, so we have got, this is how Group A looks so far because this is the format of the tournament. Yesterday, Games 1 and 2 took place and they again were based on your group. So this is for Group A, but also how you qualified for the group decided who you faced at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you can see that Holdir beat Mayam on 3-2, and Psycho Kid won 3-0 against uh, Joe. Joe. As a result, those two winners went up into the winner's bracket, and mm -hmm. that series has taken place today. And Holdir therefore won that series and is going to qual and is, has qualified for the next weekend. That's right, Holdir is already there. Meanwhile, uh, Psycho Kid lost that and is therefore going to tiebreaker. That's right. And on the lose losers bracket, Mayamon just managed to river sweep and is going to face Psycho Kid later on mm -hmm. in the tiebreaker. That's right. In fact, that that will be happening very shortly as well. Mm -hmm. um, and the winner of that series will also advance to yes. mid-season. The third person, the person who loses that series, will be eliminated. So mm -hmm. that's your update on Group A. But we have updates for all of the groups. Let's it's not just them. one, but it's all of them. So that's how Group A is looking as it stands. Group B is a little further behind. Mm -hmm. So Group B is Cams, Lirio, Kaneki and Mystical. Yeah, DG Gamip is Mystical. Yeah. 
uh, we have only really seen Game 1, Game 2 and then Kaneki vs. Kams. Mm -hmm. Kaneki made it through. We've seen some very uh, excited uh, fans yesterday for Kaneki. Yes. So that is great news for all of them. Kaneki made it through and qualified for the next weekend. Kams will go into the tiebreaker. Uh, tie That's right. And meanwhile, loser breaker will happen as well. Lirio versus Mystical. Yeah, that will be taking place pretty shortly um, as well. So you'll be able to see that one. Mm -hmm. Then whoever wins that one again goes into the tiebreaker to face Kams mm -hmm. with the winner advancing to next weekend and the loser heading home. It's really important to advance to next weekend because the ultimate winner of the next weekend qualifies for Masters and yes. has secured them where their place in Masters until December. They can chill and practice. Mm, indeed, <laughs> and a much bigger prize pool on the line as well. I think it's a twenty thousand dollar base prize plus whatever has been raised by Gwent Sports, and we'll show you some shinies from that in a few minutes. Group C, equally like Group B, hasn't advanced as much. Yeah. Uh, there is Puzzle Express versus Magpie. Uh, and Kerpenton versus Liu M. That was the first uh, game one, game two yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Kerpenton and Puzzle Express making it to winners bracket, mm -hmm. and from that Puzzle Express has qualified That's advanced right. to the next uh, weekend. We are going to see Liu M versus Magpie now. We're going to cast That's that right game. here. Yeah, big series. So the winner from our series will then face Kerpenton in the tiebreaker. That is correct. And Group D. A little bit further on. All of the groups. So yes. group D. Game one was spelling G B and Carton's way. Car yeah. Help me with that name. So uh, Carlito's, Carlito's way. Carlitos Carlito's way. way. Uh, spelling B uh, was then facing Danny Rai that we casted yesterday. Uh, winner of the series was Fireball. Danny Rai then won against Spelling Bee and therefore has qualified. That's right. Um, we are. We then also already know that Payawal faced uh, Carlitos, Carlitos Way. Carlitos Way and won. Yes. So the only remaining series in this uh, group is Spelling Bee versus Paya. That's a the huge series. The winner advances. Paya Gwent Master, Spelling, Spelling Bee, Bee Gwent current Master. Gwent Master. That will be really cool. Yeah, that'll be a good series. That'll be happening later on this evening. Um, so that will be cast somewhere. Uh, you will be able to watch that somewhere along with all of the series. I think yes. every series that's going to take place from this point is cast somewhere across Twitch, which yes. is absolutely amazing. amazing. We love that. The way, like you mentioned, there is a prize pool for Gwen Esports and there is a base one for it, but obviously you can support it just like you could the way of the years before. Yes. Currently in the Shoop Shop. In Shoop Shop, yes, in can, the store. You can buy the best board and the best car bag indeed. Yeah. Uh, and all 50% uh, of the of proceeds, the yeah, proceeds, total amount spent. Yeah, goes into the prize pool yeah. for Gwen Esports. Very exciting as It well. is, and that's up until next Friday, all mm -hmm. the way until Friday. These will be in Shoop Store and 50% of the revenue for them will be going to the total prize pool. So, if you want them, go and check out Shoop Store right now mm -hmm. to find those wonderful, wonderful goodies. Yeah. Um, so that is currently where we are. I will get we're back. We are, and the series we have for all of you. So we Whew. have a series in about 24 minutes. We do, yeah. And that is Liu M and Magpie. Yes. So, very exciting as well. Uh, let me see if I found some of the trivia for these players, in case yeah. you haven't heard it before. We can indeed. Uh, While you search for that, I yeah. will uh, let you know, obviously, these two players um, have a little bit more experience. I think we actually cast Liu M getting mm. here when we were doing the qualifiers. It was the first yeah. time they'd ever got to a qualifier yeah, final. Yeah, Liu and Magpie won the April Top 64. That's, That's right. That's how they qualified. Both of them. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in the same uh, month here. Huh? And let me just see if I can find something about them in our little handy, mm -hmm. you know, spreadsheet. Yeah. Liu M and Magpie. So I can tell you that I know Magpie is one of the most consistent players in terms of qualifications, mm. qualified 
for, I believe, and I could be wrong, but he's one of the very few players who's qualified for an event in every season True. of uh, Gwent Esports. An absolute veteran, famous for his magpiles historically. A little bit more traditional these days, but maybe today's lists will change my mind. Yeah. And otherwise, we don't know much, but mm -hmm. that the uh, that Magpie is the part of the Gwendetta team. Yeah, he is in Gwendetta. And they are one of the most represented team uh, in Gwent competitive teams alongside with TLG. So that's true. Uh, is that's why we know. That is true. So. Would you like to see the decks? I would love to see the decks. Let's go. Okay, well, we will start off and do let us know if the card images alongside the decks deafen you. They shouldn't, but uh, they did. So yeah. we'll keep an eye on it, but let us know if there are any sound based issues as we take a look at Liu M's decks first. Let's go. Let, let me just check that immediately. Yeah, should, I've already sorted it, so it should Yes. Okay, uh, amazing. Yeah. So Liu M. Uh, Liu M, uh, we already know what the bands are, but I will not tell you until when Okay, they're. that's fine, yeah, <laughs> no problem. So, do we know the coins initially? Uh, Liu M is on red coin. So Liu M is starting on red coin, okay. Hopefully I say it right this you time. You have said it right this time, that is correct. What is Liu M's first list? First list that Liu M is bringing is mobilization and it is Reavers. Oh boy, we did see some amazing Reaver play yesterday, as amazing. much as it, I don't love it. Uh, phenomenally piloted by Danny Rai. A very a different looking list though. This is traditional yes. Reavers with the wagon, mm. uh, movement from Nivellen and a scout. So it's a little bit more traditional Reavers rather than what we saw yesterday, that mm -hmm. hybrid. And I like this Surrender because it's a very good thing against Reavers. It so is, it yeah. kind of feels uh, interesting to carry it in Reavers. It makes sense in tournament lineup. It just always tickles me a little yes, when I see yeah. that. It's like carrying your own poison, your kryptonite yeah, with you, right? To be able to use against them. Imagine if then it's Nilfgaard double cross against you. Yeah, yes. It, well, that that would end up. <laughs> it's a good job that's not meta right now, eh? So either way, there is um, the first deck is Reavers. The second one is Imperial Formation Renfrey Soldiers. It is. It's uh, a very typical Renfrey Soldiers list uh, from Liu M here. Uh, not, Including Bomblin. It does, of course, have a soul Bomblin. Yes, the Master of Puppets. That card can be very problematic. And it, it's one of those additional texts that makes the Symbiosis matchup so much worse. Uh, because, of course, you can just steal a super tall unit with mm. it and then find your way to deal with it yourself as well. Can be absolutely terrifying as a list. My least favourite card in all of Gwent, Traherne, makes an appearance. Will that find the best of possible targets on Liu M's opinion and win a whole series on its own. Who knows? Who knows? We'll but see. Decent removal, Vilgefort and Vincent van Morlehem in there as well to be able to answer some more of those. I think this list definitely does do well into Symbiosis, but will it find its mark with Magpie? Well, we already know that it won't, but it is a strong list, great into multiple rounds, can play round one, push round two super hard, has a really good short round three as well. Its leader ability can just be jammed because, well, Renfrey will give you another. The biggest issue it has is a lack of consistency in its draws. Will that end up being a problem? Well, we'll, we'll find see. out. Well, and for a second I was excited for some Squirtle action. Yeah. But again, Gwent Esports fails me <laughs> every time. It's either symbiosis that everybody hates yeah. or nothing. Pretty much. And I am, you know what, I'm disappointed. And the reason she's disappointed is it because... It is because the precision strike that you can see on the screen has been banned. Yeah, and I'm not surprised at I am all. Not, I'm not saying um, I'm surprised, I'm saying I'm disappointed. I see. And the reason it, this list is a complete and utter counter list to something like NR Temple. Um, things like having the Curse of Corruption, that heat wave as well, so versatile. The elf gameplay, the ability to then push and dominate that specific matchup is... I'm not surprised that this has been banned. It was also banned in the first round. Uh, anyone bringing it would just have to deal with yeah. that. So we won't look into it too much further because we're not going to see it. And we will go on then instead to Blood Money. Another flavour of Blood Money for the 500 million time. Yeah, it's a different Blood Money list today. Okay, what is different about it? Well, this one is all in bounty. It is, it, there's no, it's not the Golden Necker super difficult variant version um, that can struggle to find its lineup. This one is very aggressive. 
all-in bounty. This one isn't using the poison hybrid. It has all of the uh, the hail gang. It, Octavia has brought all of her children and both versions of herself to boot. And it, this is just smork, smork, smork. Very control heavy, very aggressive. Happy and prefers red coin typically. It's not the best on blue. Um, it can. But you, you, I think I'm expecting to see this one as a bit of a red coin pick here, um, which for Liam isn't too bad, honestly, because the other lists both can play pretty well into blue. Mm -hmm. Will make their lineup choices a bit predictable in terms of matchup cues. Well, mm -hmm. we will see if that ends so, up affecting them. Uh, just to stay here a little longer, Liam going on red means that they are probably bringing the Syndicate. Is that what you said? Yes. Yep, I would say so. Mm hmm. So that is the. What we think, of course, could be anything else, but... Yeah, that, that's that, what I'm expecting them to open with, mm -hmm. but we'll take a look at uh, Magpie's lineup yes. now to see if perhaps I am actually mistaken and maybe there'd be a better choice. So Magpie is on blue. Yeah, Magpie opens on blue. And we will not see the uh, Skellige deck from Magpie. Oh, interesting band choice. Mm. Okay. Yep. So that's not no Skellige for us, but you know what? What we get more of is another blood money. We How do. How is it different that from the one that Liu M is bringing? So, equally greedy and equally aggressive in the sense that it's probably also a red coin list. Very, very content. Uh, and this one, all, both of them are running Heat Wave. Uh, not overly surprised at the Heat Waves. Good into a lot of things in this meta. There's no real reason to be devotion here because Junior isn't in the list. But this one is also running the Poison Package. Tweaked around the fives and the fours so that the Salamandra Assassins, a fantastic combo card for mm. both Poison and Bounty, are in. And has Fist Techs as well as a result. In the four provisions, gone for double Bare Knuckle Brawler, which I personally love. That card is seriously underrated into a bounty list. People forget to deal with it all the time and it can just flat up win you around. In Purify terms, while his opponent was taking the legendary MV Pella, Magpie has brought himself a Salamandra Lackey instead. Ooh. Only self Purify for the Salamandra Lackey, but does give coins if it gets rid of uh, statuses. Uh, so. Will that end up being the difference? Will Magpie need to get through a defender awkwardly? I don't think so in the lineup v lineup, but interesting little tech choices. While they're very similar lists, they are by no means identical, and it will be interesting to see which choice ends up winning. Definitely. Well, the band deck, we're just gonna go yeah. over it quickly. So that is the Patricidal Fury. Patricidal Fury, yeah. With Highland Warlord, so as you know, I've renamed this High Lord Warlord. High la 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 la. But this is the raid deck. Yeah. Not too many raid cards, but enough for uh, for Magpie to make it work. Yep. But we're not gonna see it. We're not. I'm a little surprised by the ban. It's definitely, I, I was expecting possibly the Pincer Maneuver deck, but yep. we'll get to that. Um, so we won't be seeing Patricidal Fury, I'm okay with it. We're going to be seeing Enslave with a very nice addition. Mmm, curious. Secret. Yes. So, Enslave 6, uh, you'll have seen a lot of Enslave 5 around the tournament and probably Ladder more recently. Mm -hmm. Very aggressive, can run things like Yennefer, can run a heat wave, because of course in Enslave 6 you need 12 tactics, which means you need 13 units. Doesn't give you room for any other options of control, but Magpie going for standard assimilate in Slave Six, as you mentioned though that Siegfried. We've we saw a couple of people bring yeah, Siegfried. Yeah, we saw that. Um, yeah. A lot of the time it is to target things like the immune Sove or mm. the immune Erland, things mm -hmm. that Magpie himself has brought, but his opponent sadly hasn't. So it's won't okay. get too much value from it, but it could be great in a bounty series. But it's the cosmetic value. Oh, of the it's stunning! For animation, you're best animation you're in Gwent. Willing, you're winning because you're stylish. Very true. It is. Uh, it's yeah. It's a buff. It, uh, true. It's a mental buff at least. Maybe. You're pretty about it, you know. That's fair. That's fair. That's uh, fair. <laughs> Magpie is. Wait, did we say Magpie was on blue? Blue. Or? Okay, so Magpie won't be the happiest with that, I don't think. Blood Money and Enslave both prefer red typically because they don't have too much to start with, which leaves his final list as his blue coin list, Pincer mm. Maneuver. And so it's Shub, yeah. Temple, Shub, Erland. Erland, yeah, all Everything. the Muta Generator. Okay. Um, you have access to basically all of the things you want mm. if they are 
So, but you don't find the Shoop guaranteed, you don't find the Radea or the All God or the Ignean Rune Mage. It's more about your early setup, making that temple get down early, getting the Muta Generator down early, mm -hmm. and building lots and lots of carryover. Having to play this on blue, which Magpie pretty much does here, means there's a good chance he loses on even with this list going on blue coin. Now, that's by no means the end of the world with this list and the amount of carryover that does exist within it. I do think he will play pretty aggressively in round one to try and push down really, really deeply with it. But it's a really strong list, and without minimal heat waves from mm. uh, his opponent's list, I am expecting Pincer Maneuver v Blood Money to be the opening matchup I could be wrong. I've been wrong before once. It was a bad day. Um, I know, it was terrible. And I'm seeing a, a random King Cobra in this pincer and maneuver. And Wolfpack. Wolfpack's great. We yeah, love Wolfpack. No, it's good it's, now. It's been redone. Really but, but a solitary four provision poison um, in this list for Magpie. Just one King Cobra. But you know, we've seen double Skrilla yesterday. We've well, seen Well, that was this. great. That made sense. And the poison is a really interesting because it will actually make the matchup I just discussed slightly better. If it's yeah. if you have if you're facing Syndicate. Syndicate. With self poison, then the problem you're is happy. those those lists haven't really materialized. Nobody brought the Golden Necker poison list, which was probably what that tech was for. Everyone went bounty instead. Um, so unfortunately the brothers have been relegated. The, you know, the Blenheims and the Bussodis now, maybe in the sewers. No, I don't, I'm not sure where they are, but they are not with us. Not that is what I can mother. tell you. Yeah, they're not here, <laughs> is what I can tell you. They're not here. And that is both of the players dead. Hmm? And we are now back with you. And we have just about 10 minutes to go yes. before we get into this. So The important thing, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, all the decks you've seen are the decks the players are bringing next weekend as yeah. well. There's no more changes to it. The setup, the, what they're bringing is exactly the same, which is interesting because that yes. leaves them with a week mm -hmm. to prep. It does. Exactly against those remaining seven people Completely. that you will be facing. I think that's really interesting format. It is, and the way this has been set up, players in groups of four, yep. it'll be curious how many hyper-greed decks manage to make it through and how many control-heavy decks make it through, because if enough of the very aggressive control lists make it through, they should be super favoured getting forward, but they're struggling against the mid-range lists yep. that are currently in the kind of triangle of decks that players have bought. So it'll be really curious. This is going to be unique in terms of a top eight from what we've seen. We've never seen one function like this, or them have as long to scrim against their opponents True. or potential opponents' decks. Yeah. Which is really, really interesting. Exciting, yeah. yeah, it is. This is great. So. We have a little bit of time. Yeah. I need to give a shout out. We bought in two new ties for the cast. Yesterday was a new tie. Today is a new tie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brand new. We love, uh, well, you know me. And the you know matches me. start in 10 minutes. So we're yes. almost there. We're yeah. not expecting a visual bug, hopefully. No, we had one yesterday. Um, so, but we are so far so good, touch wood. It, mm. You know, cross your fingers for us. We are visual bug less. We actually have it working. Okay. Um, so, and as we mentioned, this is our first cast of the day. This is going to be UM versus Magpie. Winner goes to the tiebreaker, mm -hmm. loser goes home. We will also be casting a tiebreaker series as well uh, from 7 p.m. Yes. And that will be live on your channel. Yes. So, if you're craving some grind or mm -hmm. if you need, you know, a little background noise while you do whatever you want to do. Yeah, get ready for your week. Uh, that is amazing because after this series, mm -hmm. we're going to raid you into the void. Yeah, into... that will be my channel. Yes, that's right. <laughs> we'll quickly change uh, to be live there because we're in the same room on the same PC, you know, yeah. it's not. And then we are going to take you through everything that happened that was new. Yes. So we'll update the uh, the results of the yeah. series. We're gonna go through that mm -hmm. and uh, look at the new decks of the new people that we're going to be casting. Yes. And stuff like that. And then at the very end, we have news and dates mm -hmm. for our two 
community tournament. Yes, not just next month, but the one after as well. Two big community tournament announcements coming. So make sure you stick around for the yes. very end of our 7pm series. We will be raiding in, but if you want to get a head start and you want to just go over and follow now so that you can uh, already be there, you can follow from inside the stream right now at the very top because that's where we're going to send at the end of the series. Yes. So that we can cast our next one. But big series right now. UM, this is the first time they've ever been anywhere near this stage. Um, mm -hmm. They, uh, When they qualified, they'd been involved in every, and I remember this now, <laughs> every top 64 series of this season they'd managed to get to, but they never made it into day two. The wow. first time they did, they qualified. We cast that series, if I remember rightly. Yeah, well, I think so. Um, so we got to see that. This is the first time they've been anywhere near this stage. Imagine nerves. Well, um, I mean, well that's the point. They have a little bit of nerves and lack of experience mm. at this kind of event. And while the event is different than anything else, they're coming up against one of Gwent's absolute veterans in Magpie, will have played... Probably more Gwent than most people here combined, I'm <laughs> guessing. And I'll eat most of that on the tournament stage, so... And at the same time, they've been playing Gwent for the last 24 hours. Yeah, solidly, you, you pretty know, much. Some people just went uh, from the 1pm se uh, series in directly straight, into another. straight into the 4pm one. So it's been non-stop Gwent, mm -hmm. which is tiring, it is stressful. So it is. Well, you know, for those of you who played Tournament Gwent before, it is so much different than Ladder Gwent. Yes. Because so many other things are actually happening while you're trying to focus on your game. Because it's an open deck list, it is uh, so... Yes, it is, it is very, very different, yeah. You mm. get a long... you get a lot of... Uh, potential changes. An open deck list, and I'm a huge fan of open deck list Gwent. Um, you also then have to take your time, make your decisions. You can play around what exactly you know, and you'd think that was easier, but it's it's actually really tough. Yeah, no, because it's actually you know? tougher, because when you don't know, you just don't know, and you can kind of guesstimate, right? Yeah. You know, oh, maybe I want to avoid this, but when you know, just like, okay, I need to play around Igni. Yeah. And you're just like, mm. Well, in the final series that uh, Bomblin and Merson cast, the fifth game in the reverse sweep, Mayamon won the series by discarding his final card so that the Igni was a brick. Because he knew the Igni existed and he beat anything else, it was the correct line, but mm. you have to see that line. Most of us would just have played it and we are, you know, that would possibly have been what was there. And if you have just come across from one of the other casts, welcome in everyone. We're five minutes away from a game. We are. Get ready. Yeah, get ready. And amazing casts over the course of the weekend all around, including, of course, from those that have come yes. from Mosh, Crast and Lemon. So thank you for those. Mosh, you've probably been awake for like 74 hours now. Go to bed. Uh, yeah, so feel free to rest up. And amazing yeah. job, both of you, Lemon and Moshcraft. Really appreciate yeah. that you stepped in and casted some of the series that yeah. nobody else would otherwise see. Because it's... It would be a pity not to see them. Yeah, it was really great to have you guys involved in the casting. It's always great. We've, you know, I've always been a big advocate of let's get as many people casting. Let's see as much Gwent as possible. You guys did brilliant. We was lurking in there earlier this morning, watching your first series. Um, yeah, so really, really great. Thank you so much for that. And to obviously everybody casting, we love this. Um, and we are going to give you, you know, a big one. Uh, we're going to give you a big series here. New M and, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so Liu M and Magpie. And you, uh, honestly, all the casters deserved it amazingly. Uh, they really did. To give you a yes. quick breakdown on this, because I'm seeing a few people ask, yes, uh, it is open deck list for the players. They've all had access to them for mm -hmm. a good few days. When esports tournaments are always like this, fully open uh, deck list wise as well. So, which means you know what you're playing in. That. Yes. That was not true once, very early in Gwent Beta, mm -hmm. but we'll skip over that. They did try closed for the first round and open. Didn't work. I prefer this now. Um, so yeah, it's really, really interesting. Really, really fun series coming up. For the two players involved, this is what we're calling the loser's bracket. I will quickly show you exactly Let's why go. it is called that. Um, so this is the group that we're looking at here. Yes, um, so let me talk you yeah. through it. So we're casting group C. There are four groups that we've just got, have seen all over the weekend. We don't know who's which group, but the important thing, this is group C. And uh, yesterday you saw 
you could see Puzzle Express versus Magpie. Magpie lost that game mm -hmm. and therefore goes into loser's bracket. And Kerpenton versus Liuem Li Li lost that as well. So now we're seeing the loser's bracket game, which is Magpie versus Liuem. Yes. The loser here is out. Yeah, they go home, they no go more mid-season. No more mid-season, no more masters. No, but with $1,000 in their pocket, I believe. I but there's yeah. a lot more on the line next weekend. Definitely. And then uh, the winner bracket is already done. So Puzzle Experts advancing into the next weekend. And Kerpenton will face the winner of our series yes. next match. Yes. And that will then that's the, what we're calling the tiebreaker, as you can see here. The winner of that progresses, and the loser of that also goes home. So, from each of the groups, and you can see this is how the group stage looks. You've probably seen this graphic a thousand times, but this is why the groups were drawn already based on how they qualified mm -hmm. their games and everything was seeded and set up. Um, it's one of those things where, as a result, these are the matchups you're seeing. That's why you're only seeing the same groups of people playing against each other for this weekend, that is the way that it goes. In terms of how that works, it might be quite frustrating for one player. A player in Group A might have the perfect lineup to dominate Group D, but, but lose and go home. That is the nature of the beast in mid-season. And will also be a very similar format for Gwent Masters, by the way. So Ooh. it's good for you to take notes and learn now. <laughs> I see. Take Gwent too. Yes, come on. But we'll go. Don't worry. When it comes to Masters time, we'll run you through all of this Everything, all over yeah. again. Don't, worry. don't you, you worry. You guys don't need to do your it's homework. Okay. We did it. We'll keep We're you going updated. to be prepared and we'll keep you updated through it. So let's go mm -hmm. into the game in two minutes. Yeah, two minutes from now, the players are going in. You guys still have some time to do some predictions. Yes, the predictions Enjoy are up. The, and, uh, you know, it's, yeah. a, it's good to get excited for somebody. I I genuinely haven't... We met, we've casted these people before. We have, yeah. Uh, but I, I'm not really sure who I'm rooting for. I should be rooting for everybody, <laughs> right? But usually I have like a little bit of a little bit of personal Yeah, yeah well, usually it's whoever brought Scoyatel, but nobody's no, got Scoyatel. So um, I'm really curious to see how this goes. On the one hand, I love watching a player like Magpie play. He's a legend of Gwent uh, and always adds with his experience to a tournament. But it's also great to see fresh faces. Um, so honestly, I just want to see a great series. True. And we're um, definitely going to see that because yes. like you said, Liam never made it to this phase. So they it's didn't. so excited for them to be here. It is. And he's therefore super excited for us to cast it. It is. Now, can you remind us who is going on blue and who is on red? Yeah, I would so, love. It's Magpie. Uh, let well, me check. He's definitely on one of them, my darling. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so. Magpie is on blue. Yeah, Magpie is on blue. Liu M is on red. Now, I think Magpie is going to have to bring his Northern Realms list on blue, typically. Yes. It is going to be playing into probably Liu M's Syndicate as a result. Mm -hmm. But I could be wrong. Let's just walk you through quickly who's bringing what. Liu M is bringing uh, Reavers, uh, Rent Free, and Blood Money. And uh, Escoyatel has been banned. A uh, Magpie SK has been banned. And we're going to see Endslave uh, mobilization and blood money from Magpie. Magpie is bringing Shoop. Yes. As well. So the bracket to a uh, bracket one doesn't work. There's yeah, no bracket. bracket. The only thing you uh, there there are deck lists, but no bracket for this. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, and you can see we are going in, and I have predicted it correctly. My psychic powers are on and working. Let's give you sound as well, Let's as we go. are now in to game one, series one. Here it is, Magpie on blue. It is Liu M on red yes. here. So uh, good, good, good. Uh, there, there is a challenge. Uh, okay, so bracket, I'll let so you we'll talk there a second. And I'll uh, keep an eye on what's happening here. So Magpie is indeed bringing the uh, Muta Generator Shoop list. We have see Shoop and Rune Mage in hand, which usually amazing. you're looking for a Rune Mage if you're this kind of deck, with Temple as well. So that's amazing for Magpie. Uh, I haven't seen Leo's M hand. How is that looking? So, from Leo M's side, it is... Let's have a look. Uh, so it's on red coin, it's quite aggressive, uh, which is absolutely what you're looking for. Access to just... Uh, to two bounties, uh, which is... and a third from Scoundrel, 
and you can afford to just set it with that confession extractor, but the one thing that's terrible for UM here did not find that heat wave because you want to heat wave this mm. muter generator. You might think it's a zero tempo play, it is not. It is 100% your heat wave of choice in this particular series. Well, it seems like it's staying. Uh, yeah, and it's going to stick here. Not great for UM. Now may actually no. just not want to be here uh, for this particular round. It's going to be really interesting to see which line UM takes here as Magpie is just going to build, build, build that carryover. Yeah, because uh, a Magpie's next card is probably Temple as well. Is that correct? Uh, it could well be Temple, yes. You want to get that down on the board as soon as possible. Uh, has decided not to play it for obviously the second card instead of using Room Mage. Room Mage instead, because that gives you more option for the Temple. Much better choices for the Temple. And those Temple picks are usually We've seen, oak. We've seen some great We've ones. Seen it make such a difference with the Philippa uh, yes. play. That was... Cleared up against you know, self-wound. Very... That mm -hmm. can uh, change the tide for It you. can make or break a whole yeah. series. And UM right now is just working out what is my best line. Fish's bank here desperately looking for that heat wave and Oi! it is on top. So, shuffling is... this sucks but finds the heat wave. Does find the heat wave massive for UM because they wouldn't have been able to go deep in this round without it. Uh, as we do now see the temple dropping. Oh, Adali is a huge pick because That's it's cool. double value mm -hmm. if you can get it in this round for that muter generator, which is now gone, of course, but it does give you a better bronze option later. Um, oh, it's a tough one. I'm not sure which one I'd take here. Clearly, neither is Mekai. No. So then we see Kira, Adalia again, uh, Defender Adalia for the third time. Clearly that's a yeah, favorite card today. You know? It is indeed. And you can take the same one multiple times. Yeah, you could end up with multiple copies of the same. And let's see what was taken. So... Drog? Okay, took a Drog, took... A, oh, amazing, the, okay. Viraxis. Viraxis and also Gerhardt, I guess, yeah, 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 are yeah. the three choices. And thank you so much to those behind the scenes for giving us that information. Great work. Mm -hmm. uh, great, great work. Amazing. Love to see that. So... 12-0 right now, you're likely with this list to lose on even on blue because you're not really that worried. It's yes. just about generating that carryover and if you can get something, amazing. Now, has paid the tribute to be able to grab whatever they like here. Um, <laughs> we're not seeing the random Afiri merchant steal. Um, <laughs> it's not in hand. And you, this gives you a bit of information as well. As the opponent, especially in an open deck list, you can see these bronzes are not in my opponent's hand. Uh, yes, these ten those cards aren't. Will be in the hand. Yeah, and yeah. as a result, you know, it's a pretty interesting shot. You want to get your bounties going as mm -hmm. well. Remember, it's not just for the control. It's not just for the points or the value, but it's for the addition of building up your hail brother for yes. the end, right? Okay. So meanwhile, Magpie. Is just playing another bronze. Yeah, more carryover. Has the reach with that Ansays as well. It's one of the reasons. This list, when it first existed, mm. not everyone put the Ansays in. They were like, oh, I'll find it, or I'll create that, or I'll create Selkirk, but it just doesn't make sense. Yes. And the Adalia ended up getting cut in favor of this because it can give you that reach in round one to not lose uneven or remove a real threat to you. Yeah. Could What could we see should be useful? It, one of the things that's great about the Shoop in this is that it is versatile. Yes. Um, you can use it for if your opponent forgets, uh, particularly, typically that would be more a ladder thing, but to steal a very big mm -hmm. card if they play it open onto the board. You can use it as destroy, you can use mm -hmm. it as max damage, or Resilient. in certain situations the resilience too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially as every Shoop option is guaranteed thanks to Rune Mage, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not terrible. I've seen... Uh, Shin used to play as transform the card in the opponent's hand, which is just hilarious. Mm -hmm. I know that's yeah. not what you're going to do here, but Typically, you know no. What? But in Maybe. an open deckless situation where you know 100% your opponent's <laughs> last card, there's a sit there are lines where it could be right, yeah. but um, it'll be interesting to see. Because in this series, like many others, and I'm really surprised by this pass, last say is absolutely crucial. crucial. Without last say here, you can bleed out the Erland, and that is exactly what Liu M is going to be trying to do now. Has managed to win the round, not uneven, but take maximum coins across, 
and will now have to push quite aggressively mm -hmm. while not losing last say because he doesn't have a curse of corruption or a mass purify to deal with that Erland and you have to be able to. So without that, you need to either push for a 2-0 and beat them yep. or push for a push, get the Erland out and beat them in the short round, which Bounty is very, very capable of doing. So Magpie will now mainly try to defend a bleed. Yes. That's what we're expecting to see, right? Yeah, and a pretty strong looking hand to do that, honestly. Uh, it's not awful, of course, you've always got those leader charges in this to be able to throw the mm. Erland into your hand or out of it at the right point, depending, mm -hmm. to make sure you don't spend it at an inopportune moment. Um, you can use it for the Travelling Priestess for points as well, uh, but hasn't managed to find the Redea, which is it obviously is one of the big powerhouse cards that you don't have a tutoring ability for. True. Um, now, Liu M is going to be looking through and seeing, okay, so which way do I want to deal with this? It's unfortunate. The Octavia Hale, the Witchfinder there, is a brilliant card that never sticks because the Ansays mm -hmm, exists. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have it, you just lose here. But because it happens, you know, it can be really, really difficult. So, wh how, what is really good? Oh! I was just thinking, what the proactive game Leo M can do, and here is it, nothing. He has taken a pass. Now, he has decided here that in a long round, he can deal with this. Um, okay. The Graydon can remove, and he may well hold to go down that line. Graydon no longer needs a target, it will just destroy the bountied unit. Mm -hmm. So there's an argument to do that, if you can hold both your Octavia Hale, your Witchfinder, yeah, yeah. and that as well. But this is a wow. really brave line. Meanwhile, Magpie can play these two cards because he gets down to seven. Yeah. All God is fine, you know. You said Massive carryover. Like You're amazing. so happy um, in this wow. situation. And he will have scrimmed this series. He will believe that this is his best line with this list instead of bleeding himself and losing last say, because that is a losing line. Yep. Um, that's what we're going to see here. Very but curious. Oh, but it's a Red great hand. Here. Yeah, and we're still seeing hand. that poison sat there by choice. I'm, I know it got... Did it get reworked and I missed it? I know it got changed this patch, but it's still just a random bronze poison, if I'm not mistaken. We'll see. Like, well, we will indeed. We will indeed. Uh, and the Erland is, of course, there as well. Um, yep. So, yeah, didn't choose to play the Shoot Resilience. I think instead he would rather use it for damage, um, pairing up for removal in one way or another. The 3-3 the three, three damage is maximum value. Um, so, so much. Yes. So, oh, oh Kendall okay. is the Big last grab. mulligan. Very nice. Yeah. So, so yeah. both players have a very good hands. Yeah, pretty, pretty good hands uh, for both players. In terms of things that have been missed, by Let's the players. Check. So on Magpie's side here, there is no Graydon. His opponent no. doesn't know that, but he's missed the Graydon. No, no, that's a Magpie. Magpie's not playing. Oh no, money. my bad. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, but Leo again, M his opponent has missed the Graydon either way. The Graydon is <laughs> missing. Miss Graydon either yeah. way, even when they're playing Syndicate. Yeah, there is no Graydon, which is terrible for mm. them. Their strategy was that, and they had to use Bank in round one. Mm -hmm. for the heat to find wave. the heat wave, so that's really rough. Also, no brute here and no Octavia Hale. Oh no, there is an Octavia Octavia's Hale there. at least, so yeah, you can yeah. find your brute. Um, so that's not too bad, but it okay. could be a lot better. Um, it is an option. It is a way to deal with it. Yes. Meanwhile, Magpie has played Redaya, Redaya with the Crystal Skull. Yeah. That went immediately. And that again, that veil, really awkward because it prevents you from dealing with it. There is a Pella, and the choice of Pella unit is big because you want to get those bounties going, you want to keep building the amount of removal you can deal with effectively. Still a full mm -hmm. leader for both players. Oh. Instead, we see Tesh and Mutna Sword come down and just double ping no, that extra we value. It to bang, bang oh yes, that's true, it's Bang Bang Sword now. It is Bang Bang Sword, <laughs> as I couldn't remember which it was yesterday. That is the new official name. Um, sign the petition now to get it renamed for me. <laughs> Meanwhile, what is Magpie going to do? Now, is any straight? Okay, interesting. He's probably going to boost here the Redea. Mm -hmm. So one of the expectations there was that perhaps you would purify and deal with the Redea so that you had a great coin transition. Okay. That hasn't been the case. Um, that extra boost, no greed on the side of Magpie. Just drop the Gerhardt, play it for the points. No doom, no worry, in and done. Okay. 
So uh, Ireland will come later, is that right? For yeah, the the Ireland should be yeah one of the very last plays, mm-hmm. second to last typically, uh, making it the hardest possible to uh, get the value from. Mm-hmm. But this is looking pretty awkward here for UM, honestly. They're going to struggle to gain the value they want. Uh, Octavia Hale, if it does come down, is going to keep giving bounty to a nine, yep. which can't take bounty, um, and immediately will get locked or unsays because there is the perfect yes. hand. Shoop could be used to Can answer this candle. Because the candle is... It's an artifact. So much value. It can be. That ability to protect your engines right? or play a little bit around it. Uh, I'm, uh, we're just uh, giving some technical things and I'll need a short yeah. break, so I'll check that. Yeah, I'll that's back, fine. Sorry. You go deal with that. No problem. Yeah. Um, so we, you will look into our future technical problems. Yes, I'm while dealing with the future I, um, and you cast the present. I will, yeah, I will deal with the present. She can look at the future. Um, it's why we work so well as a couple. <laughs> and the shoot is coming down. Now, is he going to go down that line? Is it going to be? Looks like it might well be to destroy the candle here. And I do think that's the right line. Um, the versatile spending ability of that candle, preventing your overspends and allowing your opponent to maximize value, can be really awkward. But we now see the first lock target, I would say, the first lock or removal target needed here. Um, Leaving Caleb Manga on the board, even if he gets two turns of value in bounties, terrifying. Something you don't really want to do as Magpie. Not surprised to see that lock at all. But we do know, of course, that the Pella exists. Now, on Magpie's side, you're looking at that Igni and you might be thinking, hmm, the Magpie, Magpie might struggle with this Igni, it might end up as a brick. Well, not in this deck. He can just shuffle it away. If a four provision bronze is more value, he can just get rid of it. It's one of the reasons why Pincer Maneuver is so, so strong in this spot. It can be really, really scary how good that can be. And it is looking like an uphill battle for UM Magpie. Played this really well and so far is in a great spot. The Octavia Hale dropping down now. She's bringing in her boys and she's going to be getting rid of... I'm imagining she's drawing both. Uh, my expectation is she's going to grab both. But who is she going to send away? Who is going to be held responsible? Okay, not too bad. Some of the bounty options. And I think that's because he's looking at it this way. I'm going to purify Caleb Meng. You're either going to kill it or I'm going to be able to use it every turn. If you kill it, you don't have a way now to deal with my Witchfinder. Makes a lot of sense. The other bounties, as a result, can go. Mm-hmm. You know? All good? We'll see. Okay. There has been some technical issues. I'm just trying to figure out if that means that the second game has to be replayed. Okay, we'll find or out. Or this technical win. Uh-huh. We're, well, we'll find out when we know. Mm-hmm. Series 1 right now is where it's at. That'll probably... I assume we're shuffling that straight away again. Just uh, getting Draug value here, and that is amazing. That is one of the things that has been grabbed, um, and that bounty is now gone as a result. The Draug that came from Temple is a huge grab in this series. Managed to stack those humans front row, and as a result, it is now going to be a really tough one for UM, because he needs those gone. He's going to purify the Caleb Meng now, I would assume... Mm -hmm. But he's in a really tough spot here. Can still swing. Bounty has a lot of power. Um, so it's still very possible. But oh ho ho. Um, it's going to be a lot here. I mean, various different things that haven't gone uh, Liu M's way so far. No Graydon. No answers. The Brute hasn't got a lot of power and hasn't mm -hmm. transitioned to uh, several of those bounties. But that's not a surprise when Magpie has played so well around it. Ooh. Okay. Getting rid of the two power ones. Love this. Good. All three of them have to go. Love that. Okay. Good. Really, it has to get rid of those. It's a lot of additional potential. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Meanwhile, uh, just so we know, there will be a second game, which mm -hmm. is a little break in between. There's Superb. No problem. Issues. Well, I can... Uh, cover everything that's yes. gone to that point. We can always, depending on how long it's going to be. Shouldn't be too uh, long. Okay, that's good. Now that's curious. The answer is coming down. That's a big, big answer. The problem that Liu M has is they will now believe they are safe. Because, hmm. of course, we know 
that Varaxis exists, but it yes. came from Temple. So, Leo as a result, Leo M doesn't know it exists. It's open deck list, but create within the game is not something that gets shared with the players. Yes. So there is a second one, and he, as a result, drops that Witchfinder. It is going to jump and hit Anseis here, and I would be very surprised if we don't see immediately yeah, the go, response. Yeah. But it's not the end of the world. Liu M can now purify the Caleb Meng instead if he wants to. The mm -hmm. difficulty is, can he find enough value to kill that 13 point Anseis? He's got four, hmm. five, six, seven coins plus leader. Actually, he can exactly do it. Um, he can do it exactly. He has to spend 13 and leader to get four coins back, but that's probably Oh, and he takes the leader first oh, yeah. as he's been transitioning there it. There you go. Superb. So Antes is gone. Yeah, I mean, the uh, he's in trouble still. He's but dead. I, When I came back and you were like, Liu M has problems, I'm like, multiple. Okay. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> all of them, <laughs> basically, yeah. From the state of the board, multiple. And Magpie seems to be able to take it home, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there is the, uh, there's the Erland. I think the Igni ends up being bricked, but with one leader charge mm. remaining, that's absolutely okay. You can shuffle that away. So two pretty average cards uh, on Magpie's side. Of course, though, when you purify Caleb, he is locked in his original state, which was without it, right? So we need one more mm -hmm. round for it to happen. Yeah. Meanwhile, Magpie doesn't really have much to play. Because, the, so Igni doesn't find value as it is. Yeah. Uh, he has one more leader to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could that, that will probably be the play then. I think, yeah, it's, it's difficult as a choice. He needs to work out, because the Igni, I don't think he's going to find value for Igni here. Um, so he may as well just drop the bronze. And he uses those to give himself the extra. Very nice. That additional ping will then, of course, hit Grace. Uh, gets the extra boost. He's already ahead by 40 before clicking ah. Erland. This one not looking close as it stands. Uh, but... Lou, I'm getting all the coin they can. Yeah, the swing. There's a lot of points in those two brutes. Um, but has he got enough here? With the, If he drops the brute now, he can, dis he can delete the seven. Because mm -hmm. uh, he's going to gain six profit, takes him to eight. And we know Bounty can have some pretty meaty swings on it. He'll probably use the leader. I think it's a 40 point swing here. I think it needs to be an 80 point swing, honestly. <laughs> uh, if he'd drawn better, this wasn't an unwinnable matchup for him. Uh, unfortunately, he just has... He missed the heat wave into the round one and had to fish for it, then not finding Graydon. Uh, paired with his opponent, playing slower and more sensibly hmm. to hit the room mage in round one, give him better choices from Temple. As a result, those better choices end up paying off. He's behind by 11, uh, so 12 with the vitality, but the Igni has been played around. The Igni yes. isn't going to be what matters, though. Uh, it is going to be that Erlen click, probably only for about 20, maybe a bit less. Oh, um, you know, only Just 20. 20. You know, not um, too horrible. You know, and, and not, the, uh, not the most impressive of... Yeah, okay, 21, my maths was close. Um, but it is going to be... Yeah, the score now is going to be... Magpie 1, Liu M, yeah. 0. 0. Uh, so we'll just have a short break between the second game, mm -hmm. first and second game, if everything is correct now, it is. Technical issue with the yeah, well, and client. Is it restarted? They have restarted, yeah. Okay, can you check? Can you ask them what time so we know the break? I'm being told little break. I can check. Okay, could you? That'd be great. Uh, so that is uh, closer than expected in series one, and I will, I'm going to show you the two decks that we've just seen there. Um, so currently, that is Magpie one zero up. Played that very well, and we can now take a look. So Magpie has played his list really well. That pincer maneuver deck is through. Patricidal Fury is not, um, so Patricidal Fury is banned, Pincer Maneuver is through, and he now goes on to Red Coin. Both of his remaining lists for me prefer Red Coin. Um, Enslave 6 can play on blue, no problem, because of course you do have your Yan Calvates, and you've got a couple of bronzes. If you find the right ones, you can just throw out those tactics. But it can be a little bit awkward. 
Uh, it can be a little bit awkward. Blood Money as well really prefers um, to be doing that. Now you're gonna, you might hear a little bit of Gwen. gameplay in the background. Ignore it for now. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So because this just doesn't start, you say? No. I see. That's what I'm being told. I'll check. Yeah, we'll just double check because there is technically a series happening right now, uh, but we think it's a, an error. Yeah. We think it's an error, so if it isn't, we will jump right in. Um, of course, we, I, I think, as I say, both Enslave and Blood Money prefer Red Coin. Both can go on blue as well, um, uh, and that is a possible option. Um, but. Yeah, from there, as I agree, the Rune Mage before Temple was definitely the win con. We've all been tempted not to do it before. Um, and Leo M still has their three options. The Precision Strike, which was the perfect counter to Magpie's NR list, banned sensibly to prevent that matchup. Uh, still has his Reavers, which are his blue coin choice, and one that I believe will be the one he will take going into blue coin now. Um, Seems to be a game going, but I was told that's not the game. Yeah, so Maybe we were told that this, but this is a series that started and playing. Yeah. So. Let's go in. Then. Oh no, I've just heard that. Have you? Yeah, we're, so we're just trying to make sure that the series that's, we were told there's the, a technical issue uh, in, in game two, um, but there's a series, like we can see a game. Let's go in, because. Uh, okay. So to what we think might not be game two. But hopefully um, it is. Sorry, yeah. guys. And so what's happened here in game two, Liu M has queued Reavers, Magpie has queued Enslave 6, um, and we've seen that start super early um, with a decent hand for both players. The scout has been grabbed uh, from the leader, immediately to spend in order to do that, and a squirrel to get rid as well of the, I think, uh, one of the tutors is now gone. Um, so we will now watch this as if it is um, the series. Yeah, the, the technical problem should be no game started, so this is probably where it's supposed to be happening. Oh, okay, because the, the, well, there was zero it. break at all. Yeah, that, um, that wasn't even a break, okay, so never mind. we are in, and here's the biggest problem. This is a horrible matchup for UM mm -hmm. because Nilfgaard is better at your deck than you are. Yes. Um, so, and yeah. there's the Surrender. I don't think Magpie has access to it. No, Magpie has no access to the Surrender at Sadly. least. Uh, mm -hmm. No bribery in this. Uh, yeah, the Scout was actually a spy, so he was scouting them for you for... It, it was a whole thing. Then but, he brought the Reavers along, you know, it is yeah. what it is. And this is a really tough matchup to win if you are the Reavers player and it's one of the reasons why Magpie has queued it first because uh, then potentially if he can get himself 2-0 up he gets three shots with Bounty at fighting through. Mm -hmm. Bounty also pretty good into Reavers with the amount of removal that it can have so uh, pretty good spot so far for Magpie if he can keep setting up Reavers himself, keep stealing Reavers, he also has the value of his removal and his assimilate. Mm -hmm. Could Nivellin therefore be uh, the answer for Leo? Mm -hmm. Yes, very much so. Uh, Nivellin could, and Scout, both of them can move your opponents rather than mm -hmm. yours, or as a result, they're, they're both pretty good in that sense for this specific list. I can't believe I just said Scout and Nivellin are good. But you know what? In this series, no, well, they, they could what be. What world we live in? And we do indeed. <laughs> as Red is deciding here um, what is going to be the choice. Mm -hmm. Which we're just waiting on their choice as much as you are, but it's this is a really tough series for the Reavers player. It is the Torres. He's obviously giving additional spying a huge number of points yes. uh, onto that Torres as well, with no answer. Yeah, no, it, it's no just answer, I'm going to win this round, and I intend to try and beat you on even. You can see as well the Obsidian Mirror, which is terrifying in against this series Reavers, against Reavers. Yeah. Just three amazing engines, or better yet, if you're the Reavers player, of course, you just take the scout. One of the reasons you're so favoured as Nilfgaard is the scout, because you can use your... You can keep creating scouts infinitely, which is what's so scary. Mm -hmm. um, you can use them from your illusionists, you can use an illusionist into a scout, and then you can use a scout to play an illusionist and just play the entire back row. 
So this game was always correct. It's the I third see. match that's wrong. I see. Okay, so it was Sorry. the third. Okay, so now we know that the actual break is between the third match, but at least we know because yeah. um, it didn't look like there was an issue there. Now, what's he going to grab here? Because if he puts the other scout in his graveyard, it just goes direct for the Reaver, and I think mm -hmm. that's smart. But he leaders in round one here, which is obviously very aggressive. It typically is. not what you'd want to do, but he knows he's in trouble. This He could lose on even in this spot, and that is not what he wants. Because if you manage to win against Nilfgaard with Calve, then you want to bleed them in round two. Yes. Well, he hasn't even dropped it yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think if he doesn't win this round... He is, he's gone. Yeah. Uh, he, Luan loses this series, and I think he'll know that. He's desperately trying not to give the uh, Idaran, though. Doesn't want to do that. And, oh, there's the... That's uh, the surrender moment. There we go. It is. And now he's in a good spot. Now all of a sudden he's got a little bit more emphasis in this round. Mm -hmm. Crucially, here comes the Calvate, keeps him ahead. Magpie's like, okay, mm -hmm. you know, I've tried. This is the Calvate. That also signals I'm ready to go. It can do. Liu M does have a pass still because, of course, has six points on those mm -hmm. Reavers passively. Does not need to do anything. Um, can just pass here, not lose on even. Probably won't. Is more likely. Would he probably play Dwim or the other bronze? You could play a Dwim Viandra. The wagon isn't a terrible shout now. Absorb one of those one power mm. uh, Reavers. Give yourself some carryover, but does go for the Dwim. Uh, yeah. does go for the Dwim. I think the worry is if you don't win this round as the Reavers player, you're probably losing the game because of the availability of Nilfgaard, of grabbing all of what you did in the previous round. He's used the options in terms of that surrender is mm -hmm. gone, so the counter is now gone. Wait, wait, wait. Magpie passed. Why did Liuem play an extra card? Liuem decided to play the extra card there, going two cards down in order to wagon a card there. Now, that must mean he thinks he's going to 2-0 here, but I, I, I'm not... I'm not sure that that was the right line here. He's going effectively must 2-0 now. He yep. absolutely must 2-0 here. But you know you're facing the top gold cards from uh, Magpie. Hmm. You know Magpie has the perfect hand because they played the uh, Calvate, so... I'm not 100% sure on that line, uh, if I'm being honest, because he, he was 100, he was ahead, he, did, he could pass very easily, uh, okay. but instead has decided to play down. We're going to see if it's going to pay off here. Um, and we have a Reaver. We have Again, a Reaver, we yes. have two Reavers. He's wow. going to protect them too, um, which makes sense. Makes a lot of sense there. And Assassination then... doesn't work the way it used to, incidentally. Um, so it isn't going to be able to just flat up remove. Is he going to click again? Is he really... Protecting them that much? He wants them to... He, he needs them to survive. Um, and uh, are we then going to see either um, just to get more and more of us? Okay? Yeah, the, Is that the, the plan? Yeah. Oh, he's, he's passed. That's now the play. Uh, and Magpie wow. will know now your intention here is 100% to do this. Um, and they'll have scrimmed these matches. It wasn't an accidental click. He no. made the conscious choice to make this decision, deciding that ultimately he wants two rounds. He doesn't want to deal with the third. This list doesn't do well in a short round. Mm -hmm. um, so instead, we're now going to see Magpie develop his Reavers. 100% the Idaran comes down for maximum value here. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go from two Reavers all of a sudden with Idaran straight to five. Yes. And you want as many as possible as quickly as possible if you're Luyen because you know your opponent can try to block your row, try and make things a little awkward. Um, wouldn't be shocked to see a click now um, of that garrison, yeah. get that little bit of extra protection. Um, oh. No, we don't see that. Doesn't do it, okay. So then Idarin is being Vilgefort. Uh, Idarin, Idarin 100% has to go here, I yeah. think, yeah. You don't want to leave it on the board. Um, could be wrong, of course, but I would be getting rid of that pretty quickly, typically. Um, so I, I expect Magpie will be looking at the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But he, I mean, he can take this a little slower too. If he wants to, he believes perhaps he can take it a little bit slower. Um, hmm. Because the, the thing with Reavers, if they stick on the board and you pass, your opponent needs to play net at the moment six points plus yeah, a turn yeah. just to be ahead hmm. um, of the negatives. Even when you pass, Reavers still go, uh, you know. 
So it's going to be really curious to see if this ends up paying off. And Magpie now going through will have played this series plenty. It is the right. I think he was weighing up whether he greeded here and whether he gave the Idder and spying himself yep. um, in order to then coup it. I think he's gone down the right road personally. I don't think that would have been correct. Um, and that would have been risky mm -hmm. to say the least. So Idder has gone and now we have eight cards in the front row. So that's one less, mm -hmm. uh, one more. Uh, space in the phone yeah and he can use it now if he chooses to mm -hmm. um, if he chooses to play the casting contest he can re-enable a reaver yes. with zeal click it have a full front row mm -hmm. and then it's seven points a turn that magpie has to over grab effectively um, well, so Magpie has Stefan which could deal with some of them it but can. it's kind of awkward for magpie you can't really move all of them. Yeah, and there is the Teshimutna sword that brings back that extra Reaver. Okay. He is now Reaver filled and there clicks. There we go. Net seven points a turn Ooh, on a dead a board. board wipe. Really? Now, it's an interesting choice. Mm. Um, and it's an interesting line. Stick that wagon. Multiple cards down. I have seven points a turn of engine, of removal engine that you have to deal with. That is not easy. Definitely um, not. Yeah. You know, especially when not all of your cards are gonna stick. Like Vigo here, this card, don't Gone. worry about it. You know, it, yeah. it will because of the option. It should absorb a little bit of it. The engine, as a result, sticks. But this is a tough, tough one. Here. Definitely. So, Liam, what is his ideal next place? Liam here could well Nivellen. Get rid mm. of the two effective cards in the wrong row yep. for himself. Move them out of the way. Add to, more Reavers. If he can oh. gen then generate more Reavers, that's something that he could consider. Um, and something that's worth considering, potentially. Um, instead, instead, he's a Neuromancy. An and he's and going for the Tesha Mutna Sword. Because he wants to no, clear. No, not Tesha Mutna no, Sorry, no, that's <laughs> the... Um, spear. spear. Um, yeah, makeshift Spear. Makeshift Spear there, again board wiping, not letting Magpie generate and keep wow. his engines alive. Uh, very, very aggressive. P could have gone for the Nivellen instead. Nope. No, instead we're just, you know, yeah. Reavers are taking care of it all. They are, and this is very different. Very, very different. So Magpie needs to get out of here. But, but he, how? Uh, well, the problem is, all of his cards, he Damn. may well get 2 0 now. Uh, it is makeshift, trust me. It's <laughs> makeshift. There's no master crafting in that nonsense. It is makeshift, I promise you. Um, we're renaming <laughs> all of the stick weapons. It with the pointy, trust me. Point the end, that's it. Makeshift. Note it down, remember it. You're welcome. Um, so, and could you? Uh, can we check how long the third game is? What do you mean, how long the third game? How long the because they haven't told us it restarts okay, at all yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this engine is also going to die, we know that. Um, now would be Nivellen time, I would imagine. Um, actually, it makes sense to re-enable it and hold a Nivellen last turn. Yep. Uh, that's what they, That's what Magpie's gonna do. It's third. Ma Magpie has no engines left. And this is really scary. Really, really scary here. So yeah, Liam has Nivellen and so much power down. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's just Magpie. Because the thing is, like you said, even when N Liam is out of cards and passed, yeah, they have that doesn't stop uh, Reavers from no. doing Reaver things. No, right? it doesn't. And now it's eight points a turn. And, and meanwhile, Magpie, probably everything Magpie plays dies. And that's the risk. That's the that's the real fear here. Um, so the Stefan is going to come down to try and reduce yes. um, the damage over yeah, every Yeah, remove turn. as many reavers as possible is obviously the line, um, or just go for pure damage. Uh, because reavers are awkward to remove, right? Because it does two damage, so you could realistically always only remove two reavers. Yeah. That's what's wow. going to be happening. So taking one hit of pure damage makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 it wasn't pure damage. It was to make it coop Coopable, yeah. Yep, yeah. makes Which sense. Is, but this isn't going to be anywhere near enough points. No good targets here. And Liu M, as a result, that extra card playing the wagon, keeping it there, 
It is 1-1 one, one in the series. Okay. Reavers absolutely steamroll that, totally. that matchup. Yeah. Wow. Even though in the beginning, oh, you know, Nilfgaard mm -hmm. plays your Reavers yeah. for you. In the end, Reavers were just like, no, no, we know very well who, who we are and no Dulemps is winning. We now know wow. that this is probably going to be about 10 minutes break. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's so. a few minutes where cause game three didn't start properly. It is currently one-one. Liu M is one, uh, has one game. Magpie has one game, mm -hmm. and I will take you to the decks to show you what's through, what's banned, yes. what we expect to be switching on to, mm -hmm. uh, because that's going to be Magpie on blue again, yes. if I'm not mistaken. So even though the wagon seemed like a brave move, it wasn't. Yeah, it was the right line. That's how you win that matchup. Yeah. It seems. So. Let's go. Magpie's lists here. Magpie, game one, won comfortably with Pincer Maneuver. That list is now through. And Patricidal Fury is banned. Mm -hmm. Magpie is switching back onto Blue Coin now with a choice of Blood Money. And it is very bounty heavy, but it is hybrid, a little bit of poison as well. Or Enslaved Six. Now, both of those don't prefer Blue Coin typically. I'm going to be honest, neither of them. Neither of them love blue coin. They're both preferably red coin lists. Each can play that way if they absolutely need to, but there's no... Neither of them are preferred. It'll be curious to see which way Magpie wants to go with that. Mm -hmm. His opponent, Liu M, we just watched an absolutely decimating performance with Reavers, teaching players all over how to win one of its more unfavoured matchups, um, which actually I'm not that in favour of, but still. Um, so mm -hmm. that is through. The Precision Strike is banned. Yeah. So we're going to see. Uh, Imperial Formation and Blood Money again for Liam, is that correct? We are indeed. We are indeed. Um, so, but they're going on to Blue Coin now. I would say Liam now series, like list for list, is probably a little bit happier. Uh, the Imperial Formation Renfrey list can run on Blue Coin reasonably happily. Uh, it has the power to go into a long round from blue or red. Two long rounds and a short round do not phase this deck either. I'm expecting fully that Liu M will cue that uh, going in the other way around now, mm -hmm. right? Because they they are... No, Liu M's on red coin. Liu so M will be on red Liu coin. Liu M on red, so which means blood, blood money. money. I'm, yeah. yeah, I think blood money is what will proc. Like we've seen before. Yes, because it is that would be the choice for me. That's what I would like. That might encourage a blood money mirror because that does change a little of whether you're favoured or not or can do into that mirror. I don't mind being blue in the mirror uh, series for series here. So we hmm. might actually get a blood money mirror into game three uh, and in the Imperial what Formation. What are the differences? So the differences, they're very, very similar decks. Liu it's M, mostly the bronzes. It is literally said? the bronzes, okay. yes. Yeah, the five and the six provision cards that change it. You can see both players go with Brute, Witchfinder, Heatwave, Bank, uh, then Scoundrel, Ignatius, Graydon, Caleb. All of no those. No tome for Magpie, though. No tome, no. But instead, um, you can see. So from six down, it's a little different. The Tesha Mutna Sword for Liu M, for instance is in there as mm -hmm. well for both mm -hmm. but it's further down it's the five provision and lower the lack of the tome for magpie means he can fit those salamandra assassins to yeah. pair an extra set of bounties in with the ability to poison as well that's why he's taken fist hex whereas his opponent has taken the confession extractors and hysteria in the four p slots giving him bounties there instead yeah so Yes, uh, that is where we currently are indeed. We are currently casting the group C yes. loses bracket. There are other cards happening all over Twitch. Yeah. Because all three games are currently being casted, if I'm correct. Yeah, every game between now and then is being casted. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how the weekend has gone so far. Let's We've got go. probably got five more minutes until game okay. three. So... This is how it has gone so far. Group A, you can see Holdir has qualified mm -hmm. already and it is Joe that has been eliminated already. Yes. As a result, that has one final series left. 
So it, my own versus Psycho Kid is currently happening. Yeah, you can already see that. Um, that will be taking place. The results of that will be in uh, probably around an hour or so. Yeah. That will be Group A. Mm -hmm. So from each group, two so, players qualify, two players go home. Yeah. Meanwhile, Group B uh, is uh, Canic uh, Mystical versus Lario. That game is currently happening, the loser's bracket. Yeah, that's happening we, now. Because uh, we know that Kaneki already advanced, and then the tiebreaker is one of the things that will be casted from 7pm. That's right. We are casting the uh, Group C. Yeah. So we are casting Liu M versus Magpie, because Puzzle Express is true. Yeah. Uh, through. Carpenter's waiting for their opponent. Yes. That will be the loser, uh, the winner of our series. Yeah, so it, whoever wins, Magpie or Liu M, they are not through yet. They will have one of the best players in Gwent right now, Carpenter, to face. Uh, lineup yep. for lineup, you will note obviously Puzzle Express took that 3 0, which is very dominant. But lineup for lineup, it was a pretty strong swing Puzzle Express's way. And they've played well. I'll quickly show you the fourth one because it looks like our yeah. game is and about group, to start again. Group D will be Spelling Bee vs Paya, super intense tiebreaker that we're going to see later from 7 p.m. Yes, that's going to be a now, great series. We are going in our game. Yeah. Right now. Now is uh, yeah. the third match because the score currently is 1 1. It is, it is 1 1. Mm -hmm. It is all still to play for. We know that it is going to be Magpie on blue. Yes. The UM on red. Each player has won with one of their decks. And I think we might see a Bounty Mirror. Oh. I, I just get Bounty Mirror vibes right now. We haven't now. had any Mirror yet. I like We mirrors. haven't. No, we haven't. It's going to be really interesting. Um, so Bounty Mirror is on the cards. You can... Um, so... Well, I think so anyway, but maybe not. Maybe not. Liam still has access to that Renfrey Soldiers deck yeah, as well. True. I think they're going to prefer that on Blue Coin mm -hmm. personally, but I could be wrong. We'll see. I could be wrong. Um, we will see how that goes. Masterful play with the Reavers. That that Vagon play was brave, yeah. but clearly has been played it, through. It's and obviously works. the competitive line. I hear Kerpaten did this, something uh, yeah. similar on day one. Uh, something I wouldn't have done to go two cards down. You know Reavers wants to play first into round two. Yes, Always but that's does, the but... beauty of Tournament Gwent. Yeah. People do things we wouldn't do on ladder. Exactly. because on ladder you don't know what you're facing. Yeah. You never know really. That's true. And here you know what you're facing and you know your deck so well. Mm -hmm. You know how it plays against things, you know what it can afford to, what it can't. Yes. And you need to be confident. You Because brave and bold moves can be silly. Can, yeah, yeah, yeah double-edged. Sure. Exactly, double-edged sword, double-edged sword, and we go in, Mac oh, and neither of them queue it. Ooh, Ooh. but it is a mirror. It, kind of, same <laughs> faction. The decks are completely know, different in every possible mirror. way. Um, but, wow, I'm okay. excited for this. This is interesting. So we're gonna get a red coin now, Renfrey and I think soldiers. both of them have kind of 4D chest each other here. <laughs> Nilfgaard, I'll take this. yeah, <laughs> we, we're both expecting something else. Um, so, as a result, it is going to be Nilfgaard v Nilfgaard, but they couldn't be less similar. Renfrey Soldiers versus Enslave Six Assimilate. Wow. Oh boy, this one's going to be interesting. Not the best hand for Magpie, Definitely albeit not. completely spendable. As a hand, true. Uh, you can literally play everything, but you don't want to play the Vilga Forts, really. The Vilga but, Forts, but otherwise uh, you're good. Okay, it's getting Could better. Made it's it getting better. better. Yeah. Um, not the absolute worst. Mm -hmm. And Liu M grabs a butt. Yeah, there's grabs. So, there's no Zika's useless. For yeah, me it now, is. You don't but... want to play that in round one. So overall, average draws for both players here. Uh, Liu M's list doesn't have a great live consistency, but finding that Renfrey and that Triss. Pretty huge for them. Magpie not messing around. Yeah, could Magpie be thinking, I don't want to stay too long in here? It's a, it, there's a good possibility, but this is a really difficult list to face in a long round, so it's going to be awkward True. for Magpie. He's got a, he's got win condition options in this. There's no, you know both players playing well can handle this. Uh, it's going to be difficult though. So mm, so Vilgefort. Stays and otherwise, uh, Magpie can defend a little bit. 
uh, off this round, but probably he doesn't want to stay too long. <sighs> he's got so. as long as he doesn't mm. lose the round on even, he's okay, and mm. he can choose to give the Siri yeah. um, as well because he can set it up early. Has the boo hurt? Um, it, it's an option, knowing that not too like the difficulty with the Siri. You're never boosting your own Siri because your opponent runs Slave Drivers. Sure. It's a great counter for it. Uh, and instead, Magpie just playing slowly, taking his time, um, just dropping out the battle prep, gives himself a little bit of armor. He will be happy to get out of this, not losing on even. Yeah. It's just how how deep can he go to do that is the question. How much can he get from his opponent? How greedy can he get? Yeah. Effectively, right? He, if it, he might look at it with the cards in hand and say, you know what? If I get a pass at any stage, I'm taking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And equally, this is very... So we still have one uh, one, per, one win for each. Yeah, we do. Uh, nobody really has the upper hand here. When no. we discussed it before, it doesn't seem like one lineup is favorite against the other, right? No, and, it, and that is pretty much the case. The, both of these are capable of winning this series. Round control is going to be important, which is awkward for Magpie. But he could well get the leader off if that's what he decides mm -hmm, to do. Mm -hmm. And then equally, Liu M having ran free, uh, you don't know what you're getting, and it could be an absolute game changer. Oh, hugely, yeah. So, hmm. So Magpie here snaps to remove that engine, and I don't blame him at all. If you can leave that on the board, the flanking engines are paired with slave drivers are. You, there are just so many points in that, especially with this leader. If you get the opportunity to remove them from the board, you absolutely should. He does have a good hand in that sense with the removals. Mm -hmm. Perhaps mm -hmm. on Liu M's side, might have been better to drop a couple of leader charges into that to keep it out. Oh, that's a very early Vulgar Very us. aggressive here, but knows what he's bringing. Yeah. Of course, he knows it's going to be the Torres because of that, and it's something... Magpie will have been aware that was a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a very... If you play Jan this, uh, if you play Calvary this early, that's a that's the risk you're taking. But yeah. now you know Vilgefort's gone. Yes, so it's a big choice. The Torres not existing anymore. It's a lot of points you don't have, and a lot of potential options for your Terra Nova completely gone. That's True. one of the big problems. You now have no Terra Nova targets, mm -hmm. which is not great for you. You're going to have to pick on what you're leadering effectively mm -hmm. to give spying to. Not great. Uh, there is one more milling card for the UM, your favorite. Mm -hmm. There's no access to it, otherwise well, there is, high roll Roderick, right? Yeah, which you don't want to do typically. If you've got it in hand round one, you're going to play it, otherwise mm. it is what it is. Um, yeah, yeah. And obviously it's not so high roll in this series, right? Because you're going to look at three cards at the top, True. and you're going to grab... Well, they're all good. I meant high roll for Liu M yeah, yeah, to yeah. get it. No. Interesting. So we see the slave driver drop down now. There are okay. two in the list, but this could encourage Magpie potentially to drop the Siri here because True. this is the best no. opportunity. That was very quick. No, That's instead. That's not a Siri drop. No, doesn't do it. Again, a little bit more damage. But now I'm thinking Magpie, because Liu M, could Liu M be tempted to leave? Probably not, typically. He wants round control. He would rather win on even than lose with two extra cards in this spot. And in fact, I think most of the time with mm. this. He still has a pretty easy drop of the Renfries gang. Instead, he's... we're seeing Roderick. Ooh, not the best choice is yeah, there. The Vincent... I, I was imagining... Actually, Liam the Vincent was... is good. The Vincent has the doomed Doom card. Doomed Taurus, yeah. that's an easy target. I was imagining that target is rather the mill card. Maybe. Uh, Ideally. Maybe the removal's then... fine, but he mm. has none left then. It's, all yeah. of his tour removal is gone. It's gone. And if he finds Traherne, he's very happy at removing another top option. Instead, he is just saying, I now win this on even. Yeah. Effectively. And Magpie probably has to go here. Unless he's willing, has he got a way of catching? I honestly don't know if he does. Uh, I don't... What? He will know his own top cards because he'll have set it up. Well, he could have cooked 
Vilga points, but that doesn't make sense. That's not giving him enough points. No, and though it's not even close to enough points. There's no target for Vil for his Mac leader Pino. is effectively worth ten points. He's got four on the board with the stratagem, so that's fourteen plus what he chooses to play. Fifteen, sixteen, mm. seventeen, and he does that's just take the pass. A pass at five cards is much better than a pass at four because mm. into round two you still have an extra card above that seven card threshold. Um, a very aggressive round here for Liu M to take it on even but and committed all of his control. Oh. Now he finds the dreaded Traherne and the Bomblin. Bomblin. And Run Mage. Oh, okay. wow. So that's that is only better. That's very good. And you'll notice the Siri there just goes. Uh, a great card, but he will be constantly concerned that it's just points for mm. the opponent because of the potential existence of that second slave driver. Siegfried is staying so far. Siegfried. Interesting, but I imagine. Okay. I was thinking if Bomblin gets played and then locked, Siegfried is a good option, but. It's a very greedy last mulligan is, there. Could yeah. easily have bricked that Ren. Well, easily. I would have bricked Renfrey's gang there. That is a. We that, all would have. That yeah. mulligan could have been disastrous. But um, instead, Leo manages to thin. Yeah, and has and got. Ooh. Magpie's playing uh, Going for the full value. Okay, Doesn't yeah. quite get them to stay ahead. Um, but Liu M probably not going anywhere here. Instead, uh -oh. more likely to want to keep playing and keep pushing here to... Because the long round really suits them. They've got everything they want. They've got mm -hmm. full leader. They can play. They can bleed all of the greatness out of Magpie's hand True. and be very, very content in a short round with a full rent free leader ability potentially, as well as some power. Liu M can set up Rune Mage for a better rent free. There's a lot of things Liu M will happily do in this round, right? Yeah. So at the moment, looking good for Liu M. But it is by no means over. Uh, if you've tried to bleed in Slave 6 with a handful of greatness before, you will know it is by no means a given that you are going to uh, succeed in that bleed, yeah. even if you are at the top of your game. So you are, uh, you have the potential, you have the options here. He's umming and ahhing over what he wants right now because there isn't a bronze option to grab. Um, he's just looking at what to get rid of effectively. And it is the short round. That's a good shout. I wasn't sure what we were picking there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the Traherne. Yep. And that's a really good grab for to get rid of for Magpie, uh, from Magpie because it's a good short round card yeah, that Magpie he would have already used. Paid, no, that, that was the not from hand, the Agnostica Surgeon. Yeah. Deck, so there's probably one more in uh, the deck. There could be, but he would have seen it if that were the case. Let um, me just check quickly. Yeah, yeah we'll double check. Um, on Magpies. Magpie's side. He only runs one. Okay, um, so that's so, all of the Nausicaa Sergeants gone. Yeah, all of the Nausicaa Sergeants are gone. Uh, now Magpie having to look, what do I want to do here? There isn't an amazing leader, but... but, but then, uh, oh, it, interesting. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, he's this just trying to... Least committal yeah. answer, I guess, right? Yeah, and it's all, it's just We're good point value, value too. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things, it also opens up the ability for your coup is now active okay. and working. Makes and sense, which you probably want to play because it's yeah. only the first coup being played now. Mm -hmm. Could you probably get rid of the now second. play Rune Mage? You could play Rune Mage, you want to stack your units on the front row. Could also mm -hmm. um, jump into Magpie's Graveyard with the Illusionist to spread and grab more unit value. But not much in the way of bronzes, if any actually were played into round one. Mm -mm. Um, so probably the Rune Mage. On Magpie's side, he will be constantly aware of the potential for Master of Puppets. One of the reasons his leader is quite important is so that he can steal that, take advantage and control of that mm -hmm. when he needs to, potentially. I'm also seeing a player connection lost. We That's not us. We have no... I'll we check. haven't been told that anyone loses connection. It has gone now. So. Phew. Just the briefest of moments, they were going through a tunnel or they left McDonald's, one mm -hmm. or the other. Other fast food retailers are available. Um, so <laughs> don't worry, the Wi-Fi connection did stick. Uh, now we do see that room mage into, ooh. ooh. The lock is pretty good, yeah. but takes the max value instead. The lock would uh, prevent the more assimilated value, but probably was thinking how much more value is that actually getting. As well instead. as wanting the pairing for yeah. the Triss, right? True, because that couldn't have gone front row if it was meant to lock. Exactly. So, yeah, probably plays for more points this way. Mm -hmm. He's thinking, either way, I'm just going for max points to get as yep. much out of you as possible. Um, 
Interesting choice. And realistically, the UM just wants as much value for Triss as possible. That's probably yeah. what they were looking for. Yeah, the Triss value, and it makes sense. The Triss mm. value there is pretty big. Nice with Magpie just to be able to drop a pretty average four provision to Bronze. keep him ahead. Just doesn't want to give up the card here, especially into a short round. Mm. The UM still has full leader here, uh, which is a decent number of points just in its own right. It's the eight points plus a Renfri could be aiming to get as far. And this is one of those patented Shinmiri style soft 2-0 bleeds. You push, you're going for as much value as possible, but with one or two cards left to go, you can all of a sudden shift into sixth gear and 2-0. And he is in a very, very good position to potentially do that um, so far. Mm. So now it's Leo M's turn. We haven't seen a... Hmm... We haven't seen Bumbling yet. We haven't seen the Slave. No. We haven't seen Tr Triss is not coming, definitely. That we know. Renfrey can't come until all the leaders has been played. No. So it's the Illusionist now. Yeah, the Illusionist. They're taking every second of time here. Uh, trying to work out. Liu M desperately trying to work out exactly what cards your opponent 100% will have left. Yeah. And has complete information of that, of course. Because not only Calvate, but also Traherne showing... All of the golds are there, realistically. Mm -hmm. um, Magpie now has a better target for uh, the cook with the Duchess. Cause yeah. Nausicaa Surgeon's not bad at all. No, it's for not. For Magpie now. And also, uh, putting another card front row is good, because it's breaking it. Yeah, it's, a it's only a one power yeah. unit, right? Which is pretty useful, as much as you are technically giving that Renfrey an extra point. You know, it's, it's not better so than what bad. your opponent will put in there, right? Completely. Um, could use the leader ability to move those around, play the Triss. True. And this uh, Master of Puppets, or Bomblin, as it is affectionately known, because A, he revealed it, and B, it's clearly Bomblin. Um, <laughs> it's a scary proposition. Because Liu M's looking at it and knows if I can get it at the right moment, I can steal and not give you the opportunity to steal back. The problem is they don't really want to play it now. You know, this isn't where they want to play it. Um, <sighs> yeah, and it may it may have been better just to flat up coup the sergeant itself. That is also a line that could have gone. It's less points for the Remfrey, and he does Master drop. Master probably comes down, which could mean Magpie has the time to leader it easily, right? Now, is he going to buff that out of leader range? He doesn't buff oh. it out of leader range. That's interesting. But which one of the golds can Magpie play? Is it going to be the Siegfried? If he's going to use the leader, he wants to commit as minimum as possible. So Siegfried is what I would expect. Uh, no, Instead, it's we... the four. Yeah, Interesting. Okay. I mean, he's ahead by a no considerable leader, amount. So he just will get for it. Interesting. Really? Because I would have imagined Siegfried and leader... But to be fair, there's nothing Magpie wants to steal, right? No, and that's a really rough grab um, on Mag like Magpie will have not wanted to see that flanking unit jump no. out because now it is opening up the ability to slave driver it potentially. Mm -hmm. Its armor goes away, but then you just jump it in to the row, use your full leader, and put both of them on the outsides. Really nice for Liu with with three leader abilities left. He um. could have done that, hasn't done it so far, and instead. And Puts the slave driver front row, okay. fills his front row here, and it, he's just going for value. Okay. Maximum value for Liu M here. Yeah, in, instead is taking the slave driver, he's just going for the four. Interesting choice. So will we see Triss next, and then mm -hmm. a possible pass or M3? Yeah. Could, uh, Liu, M, Mac, Liu M could just go for everything that's left, right? That's so... It's some of you may never have seen that animation. It is criminal that Your it's only there. Got so much oh, better. I know. So good. Oh, would it be nicer to have it more cards, huh? Ah, yes. Wouldn't it just? But then Mass Purify, probably not that needed. Um, as we are likely now... Is he going to play the Triss? Or play Renfrey? He's never gonna. I don't think he ever plays the Renfrey. Oh, it has to be the Triss. Because full, uh, full leader hasn't been used. So, so many points. 
So now it's 22 points that Magpie needs. Mm -hmm. Stefan's not that, and Terra Nova doesn't really have. Stefan is 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 22 points on the Stefan. Exactly 22. 22 points on the Stefan here, which plus the leader, enough. which is going to play for. Okay. Uh, you can set it up so that it plays for 12. Just yes, you can set it up so that it plays for 12, and you can make more than 22 points, you can actually make 23 from it as well. But instead, leader in Triss, Love then that. playing the Terra Nova. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, very nice. And it's worth more than the other way because of that boost, perfectly played. Oh, so basically the Triss play just got cancelled out. Mm -hmm. Effectively, uh, and that's why he leaded the Triss. Yoinks mm. the Triss, it gains spying when it jumps yes. over in that transition, Therefore, it's now useful for Terra Nova. Very nice. Yeah, Magpie has resisted this perfectly. There's an odd... Liu M now has to look at the maths. He is behind by 11. Renfrey is definitely more than that. He has to decide... Do is I want it to play Renfrey and play it all up? ...to get the Stefan. Mm -hmm. um, you know? He needs to get... He's, he's already got Rune Mage, right? Yeah. It's... And he wants to be able to do it... Oh. I've... Oh, it's so risky. I probably risky. would have not played if I was Liu M here. I, uh, I think I would also pass here as Liu M. Um, so, superb. Yeah, there, there was a chance and a choice to high roll. Yeah. He knows his opponent has Stefan Skellen yep. left, and that is basically it. He could, like, playing the Ren Free was the lose condition, I think. Mm -hmm. Because you're looking desperately to high roll um, instead. It's what has my opponent got left? What can they do? Effectively, is going to be the line and here. What does oh. Magpie really have to win with? Stefan. Okay. That is. In a nutshell, yeah. Um, although, because of the cards on the opposite side of the board and the spy, Magpie may choose not to mulligan here because he can then grab Norsega Sergeant after mm -hmm. Norsega Sergeant himself. Okay. Because that should be one of the cards that gets dropped. Renfri will be first though, which is really awkward. Because it could remove the Assimilate Engine mm -hmm. that uh, Magpie has just played. And also prevents it. Now we can't see what these choices are, or the leader, so I'm hoping Mystery. they will hover. Um, but it's one of five of the options. Mm, is it the first one, the second one? What are they going to find? <laughs> uh, it's one of the aggressive mm. ones. I think that was six damage. I think that was six damage uh, based on the symbol, but we will Let's find see. out. And the Soon. passive... So much. The in. curse. There we go. We curse of greed, spawn it, stratagem. Okay. And what is the passive? Spawn stratagems and six damage split. Right. Uh, so the but engine gone. is gone. That is amazing for Liu M and probably puts this at a winning situation. <gasps> Magpie knows he can't win here and he passes. Ah. That is that he 100% can't win here. Liu M is on the verge Two, one. of knocking out the okay. legendary Magpie. That is. That is an underdog story right like there for the UM. Could be. It could well be, honestly. Okay. There can is... we have a look at the last deck that the UM is bringing? We can. So. So we've what? seen uh, Imperial Formation and we've seen the Blood Money or the Mobilization. We'll so Mobilization has already won one. and so, so has Nilfgaard. So we're now going to see the blood money, is that correct? We are, Yes, it's a blood money and he's got two shots at bringing through that blood money list. Okay. And meanwhile, uh, Magpie can bring again the Nilfgaard. Yeah, or, or blood money blood himself. Money. Okay. Wow. You see, we're already back in the game. We're not losing any time here, Chair. They are not. Now, Liu M is on blue coin this time. Mm -hmm. Flips across from red. Um, navigated that very well. Yes. But is now running the bounty list on blue coin. Um, will have been more confident with this, knowing that they also get a shot at red after it. Okay. Um, and that was a really... Both players, I think, expected something mm -hmm. different. And that round three could have gone differently based on the draws. Really sharp card ordering there in round three only giving the gold knowing mm -hmm. what's left and knowing that so for instance if they drop that nausea sergeant as their first card holding the ren free back no that would not they, they lose the series yes. because then magpie can grab one two potentially three of them and then removal as well yes uh will we go into game four yes 
game we're four. going into game four Liu M could take it home here yeah and I'm not surprised to see Magpie oh not take it home Liu M would then make it to the tiebreaker yes that's right but this could be the last game for Magpie it could be and this yeah this could be it for this season for Magpie loser of the series is going home and it is this is definitely a mirror uh, a few <laughs> little tweaks and changes yes. between the two lists uh, but we will see can Liu M deal with this in round one because that hand is not very bronze favored uh it's a really really awkward opening hand there does have mm. some options for proactivity though um so might might just be okay just going to check one thing because i'm curious no i was looking if either of them have a way to deal with uh the graveyard no but no they don't. Both players have got their purifies as well to mm. get rid of initial bounties. You can see the Pella for Liu M, very respectable, and that Salamandra Lackey, very forgotten there, <laughs> nestled between the Candle um, and the Executioner for Magpie. Liu M's go. only opener doesn't choose, however, to protect it. The reason for that, of course, Bang Bang Sword. Um, would have just deleted it. Uh, Teshan Mutna. <laughs> yes, for Teshan those of Mutna you sword. who are not here all the time, the Bang Bang Sword, as we renamed it, mm -hmm. uh, would be the end of this round, so we decided not to do that. We did indeed. Now, are you going to choose to Pella it here as Liu M, or are you going to accept it going? Has to Pella it, yeah. and the reason that Pella is absolutely vital is it's really the only proactive option that they had. True now is weighing up. Do I now protect it? It's really difficult to choose to protect it, it now. It feels like you've done so much to keep it alive as well, you know? You know, it, it's it's a difficult one. It's it's a very difficult choice here. And he's weighing it up because he could also decide to just mm -hmm. hit the pellet instead because it's much less valuable. You're never using it on that. Instead, does hold it. Now okay. there is a decision for Magpie. He has got a couple of options. He can play slowly. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to drop something like the candle out now no, no. because you want that into round three. Yeah, yeah. Um, instead, the bare knuckle brawler hits the board okay. and just sits all on its own. But I expect that to be deleted here by Liu M. That's a much, much better spot for him all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. So I'm just looking at, they both have candle that wants to be played later. Tasha Mutna for both of them. And uh, Liu M just decides to yeah. put a bounty on it, kill it immediately. Which that is, great. is an option. So Liu M is now, or it seems like it, in a better uh, position because they they can react to what Magpie plays. Yeah. Still hesitating about the whale at the stratagem because the Teshan Mutna sword is still hanging over both of them. Yes, it is. And it will until it's out, basically, right? And it's a real worry because he's going to be thinking, I have my pass now and I want to take my pass. Now, the reason it's not terrible now is because he knows Teshan Mutna is not enough points. Okay, yeah. Instead, though, Magpie doesn't just snap at it and says, okay, kill my next one. Use your bounties now. Yeah. And if you remove these... You can't yeah. potentially remove things later. Mm -hmm. It's a big give, that Tesha Mutna sword. Um, but Liu M very willingly obliges. It's why, while I don't like this list on blue, mm -hmm. I do like it in the mirror on blue. Yeah. And Magpie has just had to get out of the round. When you can set your tools up in the mirror first, you can then remove, continue to remove. In mm -hmm. what is typically a reactive deck, you could see how helpless the potential situation yes. was for Magpie. Yes to not be able to. Smart, though, to not commit that Tesha Mutna sword so early, it's going to be useful in removing something a bit more powerful later. Uh, and instead, on red coin, is okay. It says, you know what? You've used two of your bounties. I'm okay with that. I still have everything I want. Mm -hmm. So while we are in uh, our match four, some of the series has ended. We're gonna tell you after this, I would say. Okay, I don't know if we're allowed to. Because um, okay, they mentioned yeah. it earlier, if they're still, if they're, um, we'll do it at the end of our series mm -hmm, to update. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the cast is ended. Well, the other, well, the casts, if they've, if they've, if they're no longer live, then we will. Yeah, we'll do sure. it after the series. Amazing. Uh, so we are in uh, the la maybe the last game mm -hmm. if uh, Liu M can win here. Is that correct? That is correct, and I am not banned forever. <laughs> they are, in fact, the bans. Um, so, yeah, if Liu M wins, they are through. And welcome in from one of the other casts. We are here 
currently going through game four, four. of yes. this series. Welcome in to everyone from the channel. And we hey, are on the, you know, underdog story with Matt and Lee Wem trying to finally secure a place in uh, in the Masters. Yeah, or at much. least well, in the not go next home weekend. Yet. Not go home yeah. yet. And Magpie trying to fight and stay in this season. Yeah. So. And that was the very, a quick interaction there. You can see Candle comes down, Heat Wave returns. Magpie lost the opening round here on red coin just dropping very little dropping very little but did find the heat wave when Liu M hasn't does have bank to fish for it though it's going to be interesting to see because for Liu M you'd want to push now in this situation mm -hmm, typically mm -hmm. you'd want to take control of this when you are on blue mm -hmm. effectively and equally so we've seen one candle gone and heat waved yeah magpie could have the same magpie scandal could face the same fate it could effectively potentially if Liu M decides to go for it and then both of them know okay your candle's gone your heat wave is gone yeah but that's not what Liu M decide now Liu M here had there was a really awkward choice for Liu M right now what card do you commit in this moment because mm. they know they want to keep playing they've just lost a coin in over profit that can happen it's fine but that's the the second executioner for them and they only then yes. have Freak Show left, plus the Scoundrel to use, Magpie, in a choice now, could play their own candle and just say, okay, Deal if, with it. have you got Heat Wave 2? Like, that's the, that's the dance, right? We know the lists, they are open in here. This is a loser's bracket series, remember, as well. So the winner of this is mm. going into a tiebreaker. And meanwhile, the loser is going home. Going home, big moment. And especially, like we've talked about before, Ooh. you want to secure the place in Masters if you can, because that gives you so much time to prep for it. It does, it Magpie does. Magpie commits a bronze, because... And it's a smart bronze to commit. The bounty is already there. If you choose to remove this, mm. you remove a potential poison. Magpie doesn't need to give another one of his aggressive engines. He can just use the poison in hand and fill his pocket yeah. at the same time removing this. Liu M, big, big moment here. Because every card is a potentially awkward commitment mm -hmm. for him. If he chooses to play something like Caleb Meng, start developing that, it's really awkward because he's over-profiting to do so. He can only spend with bleeding because of the removal of that candle. The nerfs to candle have not taken it away from being a staple. Chooses to do it, that is four coins of overspend so yes. far for Liu M in this round. But and also, Liu M already committed the pellet. That was the only purifier, yes. so we can't get rid of the bounty uh, on the executioner anymore. No, it's just you can't. Uh, okay, will Magpie want to set up the candle, like yeah. try and effectively bait the candle, and if it survives, set it up for round three? It depends. So we. Oh, no. now I wasn't expecting the sword there. I thought Magpie would play the candle. Mm. The only reason. Because he could have removed that with one coin more and an execution. I believe he would have done that. Yes. I think that would have been something he'd have loved to do. Couldn't afford to do that by one coin, and Leadering would have been a massive over-profit. As a result, uses the sword. That's a big, big card to use the sword on. Could have paired it later to deal with something else, but has decided not to. It's a big okay. choice when he has no direct bounties in his mm -hmm. hand right now. Uh, that's brave from Magpie. Definitely. He's only got uh, the Witchfinder to mm -hmm. give bounties, and with so many removal potentials for his opponent, it's really risky. Really, really risky. You know? So, meanwhile, Blue is deciding here. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the, you know Octavia decides to bring okay. in. The boys are in the town. The boys are here. They're not, you know, we've seen many different bounties mm -hmm. uh, and uh, blood, blood monies, and sometimes they're an offer, and sometimes they show up as a whole family. This time, it's a family reunion. It is. Now, I'm not sure if that double spend was at the end of the rope or not. You obviously want to keep it alive as much as possible, possibly mm -hmm. just playing around Bounty and Leader, because um, it's only eight points. I believe Magpie's Leader is at eight, whereas Liu M's is as high as 10 removal. Oh. I, if, if my maths is right, um, maybe the... Uh, Your crystal ball is my, usually my crystal quite, ball, I think, quite added, so I, we'll I think see. we're at eight uh, for Magpie and 10 for Liu M, so the double spend there feels right uh, to not remove that. 
But now for Magpie, it's an interesting situation. If he drops the poison, he sits at a full mm. coin purse, but that's really awkward sitting at a full coin purse because lots of your cards will over profit. Yes. Um, could play the candle, but again, same problem. Um, he's in a bit of an awkward spot here, really, with no direct bounties. Instead, and instead oh, goes for the big. witch finder, which is big. So, uh, Liu M, ha we can see hovering above the leader immediately. Yeah. So that could be. She's got to go. She actually needs to leave. Meanwhile, Tesh and Mutna is gone for both of them. Yeah. But there is still one heat wave. There is a heat wave, yeah, on Liu M's side. Uh, this is going. This is definitely a, a chess game right now. Yeah. A magpie. I think. We only see like a third of it. <laughs> This is a really, really interesting decision now for Liu M, because that's a huge card to get out while still having a potential pass. Isn't going to do it. He's going to play probably the Scoundrel here to pull out a bounty mm. target. There we um, go. And a, a great choice as well. Amazing, yeah. Doesn't have the coins, though. Instead, is going to full leader and kill. Dispender. And now he's going to do the same again, yeah, look. Yeah, yeah. But and? is a coin short, <sighs> but with the leader, that is superb maths. Oh, wow, that's amazing. That is absolutely get, massive. That was eight. Spot you on. Were right, so that's seven points back. So, wow. Uh, this might seven be a graden here. I think oh this my. might be a graden to deal with that. Wow. And the, the amount of calculation needed there was huge. The yeah, quick, yeah, honestly, wow, that was absolutely perfect. So not spending your leader too quickly and doing all the other things <laughs> so around scary. it was so good for me, Wem. And meanwhile, now playing your witch finder, it's like, okay, deal with it. And there is no, and Magpie does have a leader ability, but Magpie's leader, I think, is at eight, not nine. We'll see. Th you oh, said no, ten it, before. So. No, no, no. Liu M's was at ten. Okay. Um, yeah. I think Mag. Oh no, Magpie should be at nine now. We can't. We can't hover over and see. Hopefully, we don't know. Our, our our casting overlord will hover <laughs> over it and show us. But Liu M's is at one for sure. Magpie's, however, I don't know what the power is. If it's at nine, that witch finder gets absolutely yeeted out of existence, and you purify your own. No. Instead, he plays Instead, the it's the candle. And spending one. Okay, if he spends the... Okay, so... <laughs> That's... You're doing the math in the head, we can see stat, you know, it's all the processing, it's a lot of processing power here now. But meanwhile, Liu M needs to... Could uh, Liu M leave here? No, Liu M could leave here, but Liu M never should. Liu M now can very easily play the freak show. They have enough coins to just delete that. I'm 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 very interested in that <laughs> choice there. From uh, hey, Magpie Equally, knows what he's doing, but so, I think and Liam has the time to delete that and then uh, fish for heatwave. Very much so, if he chooses to do so. Instead, he's just fishing for heatwave. Uh, oh, a Graden on Graden action! It is oh. Graden on Graden action. That is savage. Um, so that's gone. Oh boy. And now I'm thinking, Vivaldi shuffles the, uh, the deck, so even though we saw Heatwave being really low, that doesn't mean Liwen will not draw yeah. into Heatwave now. Ah, uh, yeah. So even if that candle's now staying, doesn't mean it will stick. It doesn't. And Magpie is really not in a good spot here. No. Magpie needs... I mean, it's, it's, it's all of the brothers fighting it out, but Liwen... Oh, this is going to be tough. To make those 36 points is not going yeah. to be easy to catch. Um, this, it's not 100% done. That's the thing. It's close, but with a full leader for Magpie and a full pocket of coins compared to a one power leader, it's not as done as perhaps you might think. Um, and, you know, in the mirror of a syndicate versus syndicate, there's so much... That can happen in a single turn mm -hmm. because all of the coins and all of the bounties and we've seen massive plays by both yeah. of these players already. So it looks done and Lee Wem's definitely now happy about how this went. Yeah. Magpie still could have surprised us. Yeah. Yeah, Magpie firmly believes here he can play. He believes that if Heatwave existed, the candle wouldn't. 
So yeah. he believes you fished for bank, you decided to take the Graydon, and we're happy. You're happy with that. I don't believe you have the answer to this now. I'm going to boost tall to stop you finding bounty value. Even better, the next bounty you give me, I have the Purify for. Yeah. And while huh. we also saw Magpie's full leader just dropped there, of course. Um, and we're seeing the Freak Show being dropped. We are. Freak Show... Obviously, there's no bounty right now. But just, just, just a cheeky little hit, yeah, you know, just, just saying I can... Oh, now that's nibble, nibble. cute. That little punch there is saying, I'm going to give you reach, and I'm going to give myself a yeah. full pocket of carryover, because I might go away here. Mm. I might mm. actually say, this is my moment to pass. Mm -hmm. Magpie, looking at the amount of coins available, and what should could be in hand, can see nine damage is possible with an 11-point unit, the purify is slow, but also not terrible. Has to be the purify. the purify, yeah. And maybe this is the moment Liam goes. It could oh, this is gonna because be so close. I think he should, but I don't know mm -hmm. if he does. Because then Liam is saying, "I'm <laughs> leaving. Can you catch up? Yeah. In just one card, or will you need to play both of your cards? Yeah. And that's." That's not what happens. I thought I saw the coin turn. I was like, mm -hmm. this, is gonna, this is brave. We don't know how many points exactly are on each of the brutes. Yeah, we can't um, hover over them. I think so. oh, it's the, the brute itself is probably 20 plus points. He's uh, no. going all in. He's going, going for it. That's in. it. Because that has worked for Liam before. Liam Completely. is very much all in and wants to go home yeah. and wants to take it. So, brute. Oh, brute's huge. Brute is massive here. And. He's going to use that. Are we going to spend everything? Yeah, completely. Because we need to get rid of the spender. Yeah. That's it. Goes all the way down to okay. nothing on the board. One coin carry over doesn't matter because Lee Lam thinks it's he's taking it home here. And 50 points, but this isn't a guarantee here because that's four points of spend and the candle is pretty big. Okay. I oh, honestly, so I think Liam is taking this home, but I'm not. I'm he, not sure. With all the map, I can see it. You know. <laughs> oh no. The, okay. The brute's not big enough. The brute the, 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 <sighs> is not taking it. The brute's too small for this. And Liam, an absolute amazing wow. game. Liam for the. <laughs>